Hey guys, here is a walk around video of the chassis for the 69 EV Beetle. This chassis is done and we're going to be putting the body on it hopefully next week or at the latest the following week uh, when we're all back from uh, holiday and so on. This is the 69 Beetle. For those of you that might be new, uh, this is going to be an EV. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes going over the chassis and some of its components in a little bit of detail for you guys. Um, this is probably one of the last times that uh, we'll see it in uh, in detail without being you know essentially covered by a car so why don't we start at the back and work our way forward and i'll try and hit some of the highlights here so let's start with the transmission so this being an ev it really only needs two speeds just because the ev motor can spin over such a wide range of rpms and so basically what we end up doing is using a third and fourth gear in here and essentially they become like low speed and high speed so Low speed you use around town, starting from a stop sign, etc. Once you hit 55, 60 miles an hour, say you're on the freeway, then you're gonna drop it into high gear, which is basically fourth. So the way the transmission is built is there's no first and second gear in there. There's also no reverse gear because when you want an EV to go backwards, you push a button and it tells the motor to spin backwards. So yeah, the transmission is fairly bare bones inside. It's basically uh, third and fourth gear, of course, differential. We did go ahead and put a super diff in here. The EV motor makes a lot of torque, and so we wanted those extra couple spider gears to, to add some strength. But basically, the transmission has, this would be uh, low gear, what I would call low gear. It does have neutral for if you're if you're towing the car notice there's no real side to side motion that's locked out on the inside of the transmission and then high speed which essentially again is fourth so you do have to use the clutch at least when you're shifting from low speed to high speed but of course with an ev when you take off in low gear there's no clutch needed you basically just step on the gas and the motor will start from uh, a standstill up to whatever rpm when you're ready to shift or slow down again so that's it for the transmission. Pretty, pretty basic, but it's very well suited to, uh, to this car. So what we also did because of the torque that the EV motor is gonna make is we went and upgraded it to type two uh, drive axles. So MP actually makes a uh, flange, an output flange for the transmission that lets you use uh, type two CV joints. And then we've got type two uh, stub axles on the outside to uh, to complete that so quite a bit stronger than type 1 stuff again just because the the ev has quite a bit of torque and we didn't want to be have the customer basically destroying type 1 cv joints so again related to the torque of the motor we went ahead and added a uh, truss bar setup this is from our friends at air cooled vintage works it's actually made by mp and so what that does is essentially it triangulates the the rear frame horns up to the shock towers and kind of stiffens up the whole back of the car so that there's not a lot of flex of these frame horns and, and motion of the transmission. Just really kind of stiffening up the whole back of the car again to kind of compensate for, for the torque that this thing's going to have. So let's move on to the brakes. The brakes again are from our friends at Air Cooled Vintage Works. These are Willwood uh, brakes you can see with a built-in emergency brake. The only thing we really had to do on these was we had to make a new emergency brake cable. So we're able to use the housings that came with the brakes, but the cables were actually too short by about four, four and a half inches. This brake kit is, is bolt on for, I think it's 73 and up beetles, but for 69s, uh, you have to end up making a, a slightly longer or a pair of slightly longer e-brake cables. Yeah, not, not a big deal. There's plenty of companies that, that can do that. And I think having both cables made was maybe about a hundred bucks or something. So I think at the back of the car, that's about it. Other than everything being painted and or uh, powder coated nicely here, you can see even the hardware in here for the pivots, that's all freshly zinc plated. This is original V-Dub hardware and new shock hardware, new shocks. Also from our friends at Air Cold Vintage Works, these are KYB uh, gas shocks, so it should give the car a really nice ride. 
standard uh, clutch setup. Again, the only time you'd really use the clutch on this car would be either putting the car in neutral for whatever reason, or if you're driving and you need to shift from low gear to high gear. Taking off from a stop, you don't need to use the clutch. So let's talk about the pan itself for a minute. So the pan was completely redone by our friends at Washburn Metals just down the street from us on, uh, on Batavia or off Batavia. And basically they put in brand new pan halves. The old ones were, were pretty roached, uh, especially the, the battery tray on this side was completely gone. And then yeah, they were just in bad shape as you'd kind of expect for a, a 69 V-dub. So brand new pan halves and they cleaned out all of the uh the tubes and so on in there of course the only thing we really use on this car is the throttle um or excuse me the the clutch cable tube which this car actually didn't have one of that was one of the original reasons that we brought the car over to washburn was this car originally was an auto stick and there was a couple years there were auto sticks the chassis they didn't even put uh they didn't put clutch cable tubes in the chassis because they weren't needed on those cars and they actually made separate chassis just for auto sticks for a couple years. So some of the early auto stick cars did not have a, a clutch cable tube. So Brian and his team added a clutch cable tube here. Uh, they cleaned out the fuel line, which we actually ended up removing because we don't need it and so on. And, and the new pan halves, whole thing's powder coated, looks great. So that's that. Um, the shifter, again, we went with uh, just kind of a simple shifter. It's an empty uh, T-handle style. This button, of course, won't be used because normally that is for reverse lockout. I may at some point, if I feel like it, pull this handle off and, and delete this button somehow. Um, I'm sure it won't be hard to do, but it, it literally does nothing on this because there's no reverse. <clears throat> so let's talk about the pedal assembly. The pedal assembly was done by our friend Scott at Pedalworks. Uh, again, I'll, I'll probably put links to all these uh, shops that I'm mentioning in the uh, in the description down there. So any, if any of you guys need to look any of these up. So Scott is is one of the best, probably actually is the best at, at he uh, redoing the pedal clusters. Prices are super reasonable, works really nice. He usually has things in stock or can turn them around real quick and then take your core. So really nice looking uh, pedal cluster that's uh, correct for this year. Although actually what he did was he changed the, uh, the the portion here that mounts to the pan. Because we're not using a stock beetle throttle pedal, we put a version here that doesn't have the throttle pedal attachment kind of hanging out of it. This car, being an EV, is going to have a throttle pedal out of, I think we use them out of a Prius that's going to mount up here and, and work that way. So the master cylinder itself is again from our friends at Air Cold Vintage Works, 25 millimeter, just a massive, massive brake cylinder with the reservoir sitting right on top of it. And this is needed because of these enormous brakes that we have. I'll come back to those in a second. Really nice kit here, um, bolts right on. You have to, uh, the lines end up being formed a little bit differently than they are because some of the locations here are a little bit different than stock, but pretty easy to, to work your way around. Steering box, we completely restored it and got it looking good here. It looks like it's not painted, but it's actually clear coated. So it's not gonna rust, it gives it really kind of a cool look. Looks like raw steel, but yeah, it's actually protected with, uh, with clear coat. The front beam is also from Air Cooled Vintage Works. Really nice setup. This is actually two inch narrow because we're planning to put wide wheels and tires on this car. So we wanted to bring, uh, bring everything in a little bit to accommodate those. So let's go back to the brakes. So brakes really nice, just like the back. So these are four piston wheel woods with uh, slotted and cross drilled rotors. Super, super nice stuff here. Just massive brakes. I wanted the customer to have a lot of braking power on this car in case uh, he lets the car get a little bit out of hand. I honestly don't know if he's used to driving a fast, uh, short wheelbase, rear drive, rear engine car. So I wanted him to be safe and have really good brakes in case he gets himself in trouble since, again, the EV makes a lot of power, a lot of torque. I wanna make sure he's safe and, uh, and can stop the thing regardless of what kind of situation he may find himself in.
so there we go. There's kind of uh, most of the details on the pan. Um, oh, actually, let me uh, talk about these two things here real quick. Uh, some of you who watch my daily updates may have heard me talking about these. These are actually run all the way through the tunnel here. There's two of them and they come out up here. So those are what we added to the chassis to run power from the battery or half of the battery. So about half of the battery of the car sits up here where the stock gas tank goes. It's gonna have two sort of massive electrical cables that come out of it and they're gonna route here kind of over the beam and then into these, run through the pan, through these conduits and then they're gonna come out here and then ultimately they're gonna go through uh, the body over here and then up to the second um, battery, which is gonna sit about right here behind the, uh, the back seat. So that's what those are for. That's another uh, kind of custom touch we did is go ahead and run those right through the tunnel, super clean installation, and it's gonna look essentially factory when it's done. So that is it for the pan. Uh, I probably won't be seeing this too many more times without a body on it. So I wanted to go ahead and take this opportunity to do kind of a detailed walk around on it. Um, I think I got most of the major things on it. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to us through our, our website where you can find our contact info or ask any questions you may have down in the comments of this video. And let's see what else. So I should also mention that we would be more than happy to build anyone a pan if they don't necessarily want a full restoration, but they want a pan done up and then to uh, you know build the car from there. We can also, in addition to doing you know complete restorations, we can do pan builds too. We actually really kind of enjoy those and we're happy to do it for EVs or for stock cars or anything in between. Uh, this one is a bit of a hot rod with cool suspension, huge brakes, and so on. We can also do completely stock pans, which I'll just give us a quick plug here for this completely stock pan for the 64 car that's been in the same family since day one. So this is kind of the other end of the spectrum. Very stock, very correct pan. We can build these two and would be happy to do it if anyone's interested in uh, having a car like that built or just the pan for that matter. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, feel free to ask any questions you may have. Thanks. Bye.